Well, what a morning we've got ahead of us. I'm really looking forward to it. It's a sit down with Sir Alex Ferguson. I was just thinking about it this morning and I scared myself. I scared myself because I get back with Sir Alex the best part of nearly 50 years. Nearly 50 years since I was that wee boy and he was manager at St Mirren and picked myself up and we headed over to Paisley for a bit of training and he dropped me off after it. Happy days. Good morning. How are you? Not bad. I'm, I'm not coming next door. <laughs> <laughs> you good for I'm I've got to say to you, I said to myself this morning when I got up, the, you're one of the few men, I would go up early, have a shave and put a jacket on and make sure my hair was all right. Correct. <laughs> one of them are you good for him? Aye, good, aye. Great, good. So what are we doing is we're heading through there. That's okay. exactly what we're doing. Well, joining me this morning is uh, none other than Sir Alex Ferguson. First of all, Sir Alex, how are you? I'm good, yeah, thank good, you. Good form? Yeah. Well, I was going to say to you, you're, you're obviously still keeping very busy. The last 11 years, I've more or less been used as I'll go to watch United, it's fine, a few friends and that. And not really paying attention to the tactics of the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it, it's it, going to enjoy it. So, I yeah, enjoy it. And then after the Liverpool game, I was listening to Frank Lampard. He was fantastic analysing how Liverpool won the game. I thought it was brilliant. I said to myself, maybe I should start concentrating on the tactics again. I've got this book here, Gaff, and I'm going to open up, and there's a couple of nice pictures in it. I, well, I thought they were lovely, and I want to kind of refresh. I mean, look at this one, right? This here, right? This is you. Oh, yeah. The man who shook Rangers. But I want to ask you, the question I want to ask you, as you can tell us about that occasion, right? But what I want to ask you is this. What would... Sir Alex Ferguson, the manager, thought of Sir Alex Ferguson, the player? I thought he was a good player. I thought he was... What were your strengths? Fighting. <laughs> I was going to say. No, I, I was... I, you I weren't scared to mix it, no. I was a try and I was a decent goal scoring record, you know? Uh, and the problem for me as a player, really, was down to the fact my dad would never let me go full time because I was an apprentice toolmaker. So you're not doing, you're not going full time until you do, you do your your time as an apprentice. So that was six years wow. of my life, wow. really. So it was part time at Queens Park, and uh, part time at St Johnson. And then when I, f I finished my, my time and the years of journeyman, I got the opportunity to go to Dunfermline. Just the, the summer after I scored that hat trick. Yeah. So that changed my life. Yeah. It changed my life in many ways because. I wasn't doing well uh, having to travel by train every Tuesday and Thursday to Perth, getting home at one in the morning, up at six to go to work. It was killing me. Mm -hmm. And then on that Friday night, I got my brother's girlfriend yeah. to phone St. Johnson said of the flu. Great. And I think papers out to go to Canada. I was I was the You went to Canada? I was ready to go to Canada, yeah. Then so the obviously I just all the other Ferguson's are in Canada. Wow. Uh, there was hundreds of them. So I phoned Manny Isabel, because you needed a sponsor. Yeah. And she said, have you spoke to your, your dad? I said, no. He said, do you want me to phone him? I said, no, no, no. <laughs> Weave it in now. Scored the hat right in his day. And that was it? Yeah, uh, unbelievable. Changed my life. But um, it was a, a break in my life. And I always say this to people, don't miss the good opportunities. And that was the opportunity yeah. I needed. I met Cathy a, a month later, and my life changed. Brilliant. Well, your life also changed when you decided you wanted to coach and wanted to manage. Yeah. Did you always, <clears throat> you clearly always had an interest in playing, but did you see yourself as a kind of scholar of the game very early? Absolutely. At that point in my life, I made up my mind I would never go back to engineering. No chance. That early? That year, I was 22. And uh, I started doing all the coaching badges. I got my full badge the second year, the B licence, then the A licence. And I started going to the coaching schools every summer. I went to Lillis Hall, and there was a great old manager there called Jimmy Siddle. I remember him, Sheffield. Yeah, he was the manager of Notts County. <clears throat> and he says, so you want to be a, a manager, son? I says, well, that's, that's what I'm intending to do. He says, 
Well, I'll give you a bit of advice. Don't let the buggers' contracts go to the same year because you're knackered. Aye. And the second thing is, is um, always buy players who play every week. What's <laughs> amazing? Available, I mean, available should, for selection. Gaff, that, that's, and Walter must have got that from you. Because Walter used to say to me, when you're signing a player, make sure he turns up for his work. And by that, he meant he wasn't in the Playing every week. Aye. Yeah, exactly. It's, and it seems such a simple, simplistic thing to say, but how correct is it? Yeah, that's a winner of a cent. What about St Mern? Was it an obvious step, next step for you? Well, someone gave me a, a guide. Uh, uh, East Stilling, uh, that was only there for a month. I tried to develop local kids, you know, to train, coach them, and as a stepping stone for East Stilling to have a youth policy. But I was only there for a month. But then I went to St Mern, and they were really part-time. And it's the biggest town in Scotland. Yeah. They were struggling. And, uh, and I said to the, the board, well, the best, because they, they weren't giving, there wasn't any money about it to do anything about it. I thought that coaching was the best thing. Mm -hmm. So we coached young players, yourself at 14 right, years of right, age, you. Steve Cowan. Yep. We were all young players and um, we did really well in terms of preparing young players to play in the first team. And uh, I think four or five became internationals. Yeah. That, I remember that team came on the scene, Gaffer. It was a kind of young the generation. It was, and uh, it grabbed the imagination every day, didn't it? Well, the, the, the benefit for me was this. We won the league the next year, and we won it in the most fantastic style. We had to beat Dundee at Dundee. In the second to last game, we won 4-0 up at oh, Dundee. It was fantastic. Stark and McGarvey were running amok. It was unbelievable. So there was a real enjoyment. Yeah. And then... Aberdeen wanted me. There was no way I was turning around because I turned them down the year before. Yeah, I didn't know that. Birmingham, 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 they all took a job. Yeah. And then he left to go to Celtic. Yeah. So I took the job at Aberdeen. Oh, fantastic. Well, I want to show it. It's my next picture. Right, there you go. I'll show that to the camera as well. 1980, right? <laughs> Premier Division. What you achieved up at Aberdeen was, in my opinion, absolutely remarkable. The domination that Rangers Celtic had for the best part of 40 years. I mean, how, how, how do you break that stranglehold? Well, when I was a player of Rangers and I left under, you know, with a cloud of it, but you know, I took it out of there what? and never left my home life. Expectation. Everywhere I went, there was expectation. Creating an expectation for the players, for the fans, because your job really is, is to get footballers who send fans home happy. It's amazing that. It's amazing that. And, and just to back that up, I was lucky enough, as you know, to play with Rangers for the best part of 15 years. And I didn't appreciate the expectation till I went somewhere else where there wasn't as great expectation. Of course, yeah. And, and what you try and do is try and get those expectation levels up wherever you go after that. Right, right. So I, I understand that. Yeah. It's an amazing thing, expectation, isn't it? It really is, uh, It can drive you, eh? So, incredible period at uh, Aberdeen, Gaff. Now, that team effectively won a cup, winners' cup in Gothenburg. Uh, one of the greatest achievements, in my opinion, for a, for a British football team, mm. genuinely. What a team you had. You know, my old school pal, primary school pal, Eric Black getting one of the goals. People, f I think people tend to forget, brilliant result in the final, clearly beating Real Madrid. But I'll never forget Petodre and right? you beat Bayern Munich. No, the 3 2 game, yeah. But it was a great, it was a great sign. And beating Bayern Munich gave us the impetus. And when we got to the final, and I said to Archie, we're a certainty. It's amazing, that. Archie says, for Christ's sake, don't tell anybody that. And you know, we were the last football club to beat Real Madrid in the final. I, that's, and that's for, what is it, 40 years? Yeah. And we actually battered them. Yeah. It went to extra time, I don't know how, but we actually battered them. Also, if I may, you, you also had the, and it is an honour, a great honour, of managing the country at a, a major tournament, I'm thinking about 86 World Cup, where obviously due to unforeseen circumstances you got the job. Tell me what that felt like. Was it was it any in any way, shape or form, did you treat it differently to club management? I mean, it clearly is different to club management. Or do you try and take the same principles in with you into that particular tournament? Well, I tried to to approach it 
to give them as the best chance we possibly could. I went down to see Alf Ramsey, mm -hmm. and who um, was living in Ipswich. He'd also retired, and he, he, the, the first thing he said was, "Take your own water," because they suffered with um, Nettie, the but goalkeeper. 1970, wasn't it? Huh? 1970, yeah. And uh, he was very, very, very helpful. Yeah. My biggest problem was strikers. Uh -huh. I, I, I think you'll find in the 98 World Cup, that was my biggest problem with strikers, not your biggest problem with strikers. Man, it, really, it really was a problem, so... <laughs> I, I was hanging I was hanging on how Archibald was. Yeah. And he hadn't played all season. He was with Barcelona, and... I said, I've got to take him, because I thought he was a marvellous player. Yeah. And I also picked Kenny, and then Kenny went through an That's injury. Right. That's right. Well, it's only a week before we were going away. I, t I decided to get him sharp because I thought he's different for the rest. Yeah. And I left yourself out. Yeah. That was one problem. Yeah. The big problem I had whilst we went there, I had so many Aberdeen players. Yeah. And I felt sort of a, what would the, what would the players think if I picked all the Aberdeen players? But it's not natural. You would go for players that you know, uh, uh, yeah, uh, no, and, and haven't let you down. Yeah. Surely that's a natural thing, is it not? No, it, was, it preyed on me anyway. You know, it doesn't matter how you look at it, it preyed on me. Right, Gav, I'm, I'm moving on now. After that, look at this. I'm a handsome guy. Aye. <laughs> yep. Off to Manchester United, right? Which, at the time, it must have been a kind of pinch yourself moment. But because of your success, Aberdeen, did you have any other options than Manchester United, or was it pretty straightforward? Well, I turned down Arsenal, I turned down Wolverhampton Wanderers, and I turned down Tottenham. Right, and the reasons because, for that? Well, the reason is that Dick Donald said to me one day, he says, and I, and I said to him, maybe it's time for me to leave, and blah, blah, blah. He says, don't talk like that. He says, you've got a great set up here. You should only go to one club. And I says, who's that? He says, Man United. There you are. Dick Donald said that to me. So I never, never budged till yeah. that came along. And once it came along, pretty straightforward decision. Absolutely. Oh no, it was, it was, oof, couldn't get there quick enough. And what was your initial thoughts first couple of weeks moving into Manchester United? Well, I would have to say there was a lot of trepidation about it. Mm -hmm. So travelling down that morning in the plane with Martin Edwards and the, the lawyer Morris Watkins, I was asking a lot of questions and I wasn't actually getting all the answers. Yeah. If you know what I mean? And um, and uh, we go on track and used to phone me quite a lot. And I didn't get a great picture out of that. You know what I mean? But so I knew that, um, I knew all the players. I mean, they're <clears throat> world class names in many ways. Uh, but I, I, I was determined to install what I believed at Aberdeen at Simon. Yeah. And that was to produce young players. I thought that was the best way to go. And plus the fact, I had this, all this evidence of Matt Busby. He was the greatest manager of that time. And what he did for Manchester United was amazing. Well, you mentioned Dick Donald there, and it's a theme throughout, I think, your career. People that you look up to and are thankful for their help and guidance. And you mentioned Sir Matt, I imagine Martin Edwards, Sir Bobby Charlton as well were there. Bobby Charlton, different class. Nah. Wonderful man. So Matt was terrific, you know, that uh, he, if I went to Old Trafford during the week, I could smell his pipe. Yeah. You know, and they'd be wafting up the stairs. And I got going from a cup of tea with him, and he was great. But Bobby Charlton was fantastic with me, honestly. He's wonderful. And we used to go to the games together, and I said to him his day, I think the best Scottish team would have been the best English team. And he laughed. He says, how do you work that out? I says, well, we'll all end the glitch up front. And he says, what about Duncan Edwards? I says, oh, yeah, OK. We'll forget it. We've talked about <laughs> it before. It's funny, because we've done it as well. We pick our all-time British team, and I go, right, Lawn Douglas, that's the forward sorted, right? <laughs> but as I mean, it's a great the arguments and discussions. Well, you, you won, I think the first trophy you won with the Cup, 1919. Uh, There's obviously a story, Mark Robbins scoring the goal and all that stuff. What do you remember about, I think it, was, it might have been your fourth season there, you, you, you won the Cup. Did that feel, not so much a weight off your back, but 
you know, it must have been, well, you used to winning things at this point, Aberdeen. That particular December, we went through the whole December League games, never won a game. You know, and of course, with the, the press play a part in all these things, mm -hmm. I'm afraid that and it's no, it's no nice to read it. And I always said, Matt always said, don't read the papers. Don't read the papers. And I, and I, and I did that in that particular time. So the cup tie against Dots Forest was going to be huge because Clough's teams were arguably one of the best cup teams. Yeah. But the thing that won us that day, because we had a few injuries, the thing that won us that day was the fans. They were defiant. Mm -hmm. They were absolute out of this world. And they were urging us on all the time. You couldn't help but smell the, the, yeah. the opportunity of it, you know. And they played, they, they played well, the team. Yeah. And we, one nil was well justified, yeah. you know. We played really well. And the winning goal with Sparky outside his foot. I, 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 I wake up the night and seen that. Outside his right foot, Aye. curled around. And the funny thing about Mark Hughes was it was a big game player. Aye. But he was a fantastic crosser of the ball. Unbelievable crosser of the ball. See if he drifted out wide the left foot. Delivery on. Right foot, 100%. So Mark Robbins scored that winning goal. And every game after that was away from home. Yeah. And we won the cup. It's amazing. And it does make a difference. It makes a difference to the, the, the players, yep. to the club, the ambitions, everyone else. It just grew after that. It's amazing. I want to show you a picture, another picture. It sums up football for me, this. And it was, I think it was your first championship. Here we go, man. What a picture this is. 1993. Look at that. <laughs> that sums up for me. Sheffield you Wednesday. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday. Look at Kiddo on his knees, knew in the touchline. Yeah. Uh, uh, for me, that, that, that just sums up football, passion, yeah. everything, relief, a release of tension. You, yeah. you, you obviously remember that occasion. Oh, after the game, Trevor Francis was manager. Trevor. And they come into my office and says, he scored in the second leg. <laughs> so it's eight minutes injury time. So I says, well, I, it actually weighed with me, you know. And I went home that night and watched the game. You know how many minutes it should have been? 15 minutes. I knew, I knew you'd go the other way. 15 See, minutes. Because but it, I bet you were pleased when they blew the whistle and didn't they play the extra time. Oh, he, did, he never, no chance. <laughs> Just as soon as we scored that winning goal, Anyway, the referee the, the referee get injured. The referee get injured. The referee got injured. Yeah, and he was carried off. You should have been on and taking a whistle. Oh, I did after that. But the the Wednesday came on, there was oh, what a subject but there was fifty minutes. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And there's another one I want to show you which I mean, this yeah. was unbelievable. I don't care, one of the most and, and when you beat oh, Bayern Munich. Yeah. You beat Bayern Munich to lift the Champions League. Was there at any point during that game you thought, it's gone? It's, it's easy to say this, but a homework one is a game. Mm -hmm. So when, when the, the analysis of, of uh, Bayern was, on big games in particular, they used to take the two wide players off and go a tight midfield. Mm -hmm. So we know having Keenan schools, I had to gamble in my midfield and I wanted to make sure we had a passing ability and I decided to play David Beckham in centre midfield along with Nicky Butt. Yeah. Nicky do all sorts of jobs, the marvellous. And I played Giggsy wide right and Blomquist mm -hmm. wide, wide left. And it didn't work in the first half at all. And I was waiting for them to make the substitution. Mm -hmm. So the minute they made the substitution, I went three in the middle and three up. And I, and I brought on Teddy Sheridan and I said, Teddy, you go and play on top of the right centre back, try and pull the right back in. The right back was Babel. Yep. You know? And with Giggs playing in the left midfield, he was, it was really suited to him because he was running off the space all the time. And Beckham, the right hand side, started getting crosses in. And the last 15 minutes, we made a lot of chances. But having said that, we could have been out. Mm -hmm. We could have been out long before. Like they had the crossbar, yeah. they missed a couple of chances. And uh, Smeichel made a couple of terrific saves. I mean, I, I, I still watch it, I think. That's I mean, amazing. It, 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 it really was amazing. Yeah. That, that, that side, I tell you what, it did have an abundance. I know it's skill and talent, but it's spirit, eh? It's spirit. Oh, but the perseverance. We never gave in. Yeah. 
And that, that's a quality that, that great teams always had. You know, we, we had that for years, the ability. The, I mean, at the end of the day, when you look at my career, the United, it, it's encapsulating the other leagues and all that kind of... But it, it's also about myself and the team. We were second in the league six times and won the next year. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that is. I'm six times second and twice in goal difference and win the league of next year. I don't know so that. that. Yeah. So it tells you what that club was about, yeah. what these players were about. And it was not just one set of players. That was going back to the 94, 95 team, yeah. tough as nails, to a really talented team in 2008 mm -hmm. with uh, Tevez. What team? Ronaldo and Rooney up front. Yeah. They were unbelievable. Well, how, what was the big difference between those sides and effectively? I mean, there's a, clearly a lot of similarities, as, you, as you've mentioned. What, what would you think were the difference between those two great sides? Well, the 94 95 team was basically an English team with uh, Smyko, you know? Yeah. We didn't have a lot of foreign influence. By the time we came to 2008, we'd have quite a few foreign players yeah. in it, you know? The game had changed it. The game had changed And did they get it, Gaff? Did they get it as soon as they 100%. came back? 100%. No problem. The, 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 every foreign player, every European player would come in, adapted right away. And then they also, it's a funny thing, they probably looked upon company United bigger than anything because mm -hmm. the, the reputation of the club had grown. You know, the, there's no, no question. People say it's the biggest club in the world. We have, you know, the club of this probably got a billion fans all over the world, you know? It's that kind of club, it's got a romance about it. But obviously, created through the Munich air disaster. Yeah. It's a lot to do with it. But it's also a lot to do with the, the, the challenge when any young player, any player comes to the club. The challenge is huge. And when you get success at that club, it's fantastic. You clearly worked but with far and away some of the best, you know, Robo, Cantona, you mentioned Tevez, obviously Ronaldo, just unbelievable talent. Now this is a kind of strange, did you, did you treat them all the same or, or within reason did you have to do things accordingly? Well, everybody thought Robo was my son, because <laughs> they never get criticised. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really believe that, but anyway. No, I think that, the most important thing for me as a manager is to be consistent. Yeah. So the players, the staff, everybody recognised the man coming in that door every morning. I never changed. Yeah. I had the same principles all the time, the same di discipline code all the time, and the same attitude towards staff in particular mm -hmm. all the time. I never changed. So I, I, I made it, it made it easy for everybody to feel comfortable with that. You know, mm -hmm. uh, 26 years brings a lot of. Uh, uh, what a benefits, mm -hmm. you know. Right, Gaff, I want to take you for me the title in 2013. Right. Right. percent Clearly, everything and every trophy would mean a lot to you, right? But just how much did that one mean to you? Well, Cathy's sister died in the previous October and she was lost. Mm -hmm. She was definitely lost. So on Christmas, I said to Wick, I'm going to retire at the end of the season. And I knew by her reaction, she was delighted mm -hmm. because she, was, she wasn't her own. And uh, she'd given me her life to everything about me was her looking after me, you know, because of my job and, you know, and we, bringing the kids up. So when I said, I'm going to retire, I know she was, she was delighted, I knew that. I could tell by her body language. And that was, and I always, always said, when I got to January, what I did every January 1st, I wrote down every year our opponents' games where I think points could be won or lost. And I put it down to one by 10 points. Did you really? I did. The team was playing really well. Uh, I thought we'd do that, but it was, I think it was 11 points. Mm -hmm. So they did really well, the team played really well. And Van Persie was fantastic. Aye, aye. His goals, his 
thrust in the game, his power and his confidence, you know. Yeah. I think my record um, is fantastic. But also, what really made me was losing games. If I was the cup, I was the few cup finals. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. I was the few, and I can eat, every cup final I lost, I could go right through every minute. How we lost it. Is that is that this one of the signs of greatness? Remembering the defeats more than the victories. One hundred percent. That's the thing that should drive you on. I was always the next day after I lost, I was better. Yeah. The players knew that too, by the way. Yeah, I can imagine. The dad during the road, we're going on that corridor, all getting in different rooms. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm speaking for everybody when I say. Thank you for all the memories. And Thank there's, you. there's far more memories of you lifting trophies and doing good things than there is losing one or two cup finals. Thanks for your time, Gaffer. I've really Pleasure. enjoyed it. Thanks very much, Thank Alan. You. Thank you.